And good morning again. The chairman of the House Budget Committee, Paul Ryan, joins us this morning from Janesville, Wisconsin. And I want to wish you a happy St. Patrick's Day, uh, Mr. Chairman. Also, I see you wore your green tie. Full confession, full disclosure here. I thought it was yesterday. <laughs> there were a lot of people running around in Washington that were wearing the green and celebrating, uh, but turns out it's officially today. So uh, that out of the way. Here hey, we get, go. That means you get to celebrate it twice, Bob. I got it. Now I know. Mr. Chairman, let me start with the hardest question of all. You unveiled your budget this week, and critics immediately said this was, quote, a retread of ideas that were soundly rejected in the last election. Uh, it does sound a lot like what you were talking about during the election. How do you respond to that? Well, look, our budget is a vision document. It is our budget encapsulates what we think is the right way to go. Fundamental tax reform for economic growth. Patient-centered health care replacing Obamacare. Getting our budget balanced. It's a responsible, balanced budget. And we think a balanced budget is a necessary means to a healthier economy, to more jobs. That's why we're saying let's balance the budget so we can make sure that we don't have a debt crisis. Give businesses the certainty they need so they can plan, invest, give families more of their own take-home pay. Uh, I hardly think that that's retread. I think that that's what people want. Um, we've been criticized for repealing Obamacare in our budget. It's not as if we woke up the day after the election and said, let's change our principles, turn them in, and, and throw in with government-run health care. We believe that young people, seniors, families, businesses – are in for a very rude awakening as Obamacare is rolled out. It still has nearly two years to go before it's fully implemented, and we're showing that there's a better way of going. Well, and this is a better plan to balance the budget, and that's what our document does. That's what our budget pro provides for. Well, let me just pick up on that. I mean, you know and I know that the votes are simply not there to repeal what you call Obamacare right now. Republicans say that. Democrats say that. Uh, and certainly... The votes are not there. If somehow or another Congress did repeal it, the president would almost certainly veto it. And there are no there are certainly not enough votes to do that. So aren't you just kind of wasting time by saying uh, and really. this is a big part of your savings here is to, because you say repealing Obamacare is, is how you really save money. But isn't that some people say it's a fantasy. And I, I wonder Two why. Points. Why do you why do you continue to say this is what we need to do? Two points. Number one, that just goes to show that Obamacare is a massive budget buster, that it is creating massive deficits in the future, and I really believe it's going to destroy the health care plan, the health care system in America. We believe the law will collapse under its own weight, and that people will be eager for alternatives as the gory details unfold in the future with its implementation. That's point number one. Point number two is. The same point could be made for the Senate budget, dead on arrival in the House. It's a trillion dollar tax increase with even more spending. They're not cutting spending. They have some spending cuts on health care providers washed out by even higher spending increases. And so you could say the same thing with the Senate budget. The point is each budget reflect our priorities, reflect our principles, reflect our vision. We believe in balancing the budget. We believe in gover getting government to live within its means. We believe in pro-growth economic policies, energy exploration, fixing our entitlements before they go bankrupt. And sure, you could say that the, the de Democrats don't like that, but we're not writing a Democratic budget in the House. We're writing a Republican budget. And same goes for Patty Murray. She's writing a Democratic budget. Trillion dollar tax increase, which kills tax reform. Even more spending, meaning they never, ever balance the budget ever. The real question is, is are we ever going to bridge the gap? I think that's probably where we're going to go with this conversation, which is where we should go. Well, At I think, least they're passing a budget. Uh, I, I, and that's, that's a good thing. Not, I see that as progress. I couldn't agree with you more on that because I think it would be <laughs> it's hard to pass what the Democrats have put out there today as, as, if I do say so, what you have put out there today. But let me just, let me just ask you this. The, uh, and it is a Democratic-leaning group, but the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities says your budget is going to cost nearly $6 trillion in lost federal revenue over the next decade, and there is no plausible way to pay for it. It's either going to drive up the deficit or you're going to have to raise taxes. Now, now what, what's your answer, it's a, response to that? It, it's a ridiculous statistic that didn't even measure our budget. They made up their own assumptions to come up with that statistic. We are saying let's have revenue neutral tax reform. What does that mean? That means take the current amount of revenue that's coming in through the tax code and replace it with a better tax code, one that the Ways and Means Committee will write this year, meaning lower tax rates with fewer crony loopholes. 
This is the whole point of tax reform. And there are Democrats who agree with us. The Bipartisan Policy Center, another left-leaning group, says we should lower our tax rates across the board for families and small businesses and, and corporations and pay for it by plugging loopholes. And you can do so without losing revenue to the federal government, which is what our plan is, which absolutely negates the statistic that you just read to me. Uh, let me ask you about this. John Boehner uh, said in an interview broadcast on uh, ABC this morning uh, that we do not have an immediate debt crisis, which is basically uh, what the president said in, the inter in an interview the other day. Do you believe we have an immediate debt crisis? To borrow um, a phrase from my friend Erskine Bowles in the Fiscal Commission, uh, we are the healthiest looking horse in the glue factory. <laughs> that means America is still a step ahead of the European nations who are confronting a debt crisis. Of Japan, that's in its second lost decade. It's partly because of our resilient economy, because of our world currency status. So we do not have a debt crisis right now, but we see it coming. We know it's irrefutably happening. And the point we're trying to make with our budget is let's get ahead of this problem. Look, we know that in a debt crisis, you pull the rug out from under people living on the safety net. You cut seniors in retirement. This is what we're trying to avoid. The purpose of having a reasonable balanced budget like we're proposing is let's prevent a debt crisis from happening in the first place. If we keep kicking the can down the road, if we follow the president's lead, or if we pass the Senate budget, then we will have a debt crisis. Then everybody gets hurt. You know who gets hurt first and the worst in a debt crisis? The poor, the elderly. That's what we're trying to prevent from happening. Pro-growth economic policies to get people working to bring in more revenue and get the entitlement system under control so it doesn't go bankrupt, so people can seriously plan for the promises that government has made for them in retirement. That's what we're saying is let's prevent a debt crisis from happening. We know it's coming. This budget does that. Do you uh, still trust the president? John Boehner uh, said in the interview that he still trusts the president. Do you trust him? And I guess part two of that would be, do you trust congressional Democrats? I, I, I subscribe to the Reagan school of thought, which is trust but verify. Um, I think the, the so-called charm offensive, I think that's a good thing. Look, at least the president is now starting to talk to people in the other party. Uh, the real question is the sincerity and whether it's going to continue on, whether he'll go back to the campaign trail, focus on 2014, or whether he'll sincerely try to work with us to get a down payment on the problem. My goal and hope with this budget is that now that the Senate's actually doing a budget, is that we have this vehicle, this legislative process, which was always intended to work this way. House passes a budget, Senate passes a budget, try to bridge the gap, talk with the president, and let's get a down payment on the problem. The goal of the Republican majority is to get us on a path to balancing the budget, is to get a down payment on our debt and deficits, to push the debt crisis out, to borrow time with the bond markets. Yes, I believe the president won't pass our budget into law, but let's get a down payment. Let's get a, a good start on the problem. That to me is something that a constructive bipartisan engagement can accomplish. And that means that this charm offensive needs to be sincere and needs to last throughout the summer. Do you think uh, that, the, uh, that the president uh, is right when he says that some members, and I think he didn't differentiate between parties, are just simply afraid to make what they know are the right decisions on some of these things? I've been saying that for years, Bob. I mean, look, I'm the guy who put out entitlement reform uh, seven budgets ago. Um, the, the third rail in politics is if you touch these programs, um, you politically die. Look, the problem we have is these programs are going bankrupt. We need to be honest with the American people about the problems and the challenges ahead and the solutions that are needed to fix them. And I would argue it's the president who's been missing in action on this front. He knows we have a debt crisis coming. All independent experts show us this. And so he hasn't even given us a budget yet. I mean, the law required that he was supposed to submit a budget the first Monday in February. He still hasn't done it. At least the Senate's doing something now. And so where we have not seen leadership is in the critical areas we need it. The president and the Senate, which now is actually putting a plan out there. But now we've got to get on to the point where we have a problem. We know what it is. Let's start fixing it. House Republicans have been offering budgets every year on this. And so, yeah, people have been ducking these tough issues. People have been hoping to use these issues to beat the other party in the next election. Let's get through that. Let's start fixing problems. And I'm hopeful that we can maybe get a down payment on this problem this year. All right. Well, Congressman, we want to thank you very much. We hope we'll be hearing from you many times uh, in the days to come uh, as we continue to cover this story. Always nice to Thanks, have Bob. you. Thanks, Bob. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, thank you. And the same to you.